Right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I am joined by Alex Goldfain, who is in Chicago. How are you doing, Alex? Hello, how are you, John? Uh, great. And Alex is the author of the book, uh, um, Selling Boldly, but he's got this great new book that's actually coming out next week called Five Minute Selling. And that sounds fantastic. Uh, the proven simple system that can double your sales, even when you don't have time. And let's face it, Alex, uh, uh, people are always saying that they don't have time. And that's the reason why they can't achieve all the great things that they have to achieve. So you've got it down to a five minute selling system. So tell me about the genesis of this first. Yeah, I mean, you said it. Uh, nobody's sitting around uh, waiting for the phone to ring. If, if salespeople are in this career, they have lots of customers uh, and they're always calling us. And they're never calling when things are good and easy. They never say, hey, John, great job, man. That was awesome. Can I pay you more? Uh, mm -hmm. They don't call with that. They call when something's wrong. And so we spend our days reacting to what's incoming from our customers. Either it's wrong or it's urgent or, um, you know, they need it yesterday, right? Or you didn't get them enough or where is it or, 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 you know, why not? So they put up a hoop and they say, jump and we jump. Well, 90 to 95% of salespeople sell this way, right? Mm -hmm. Which is reactively, which means if we can be proactive, and call our customers and prospects and be present when nothing is wrong. That's the key phrase, right? When nothing is wrong, four words at the count of. Um, because just as customers only call us when something's wrong, when do they hear from salespeople? Usually when there's a problem of some kind to report, right? I don't have enough, the price is going up, um, mm -hmm. I can't be there when I said I would. It can't be there when I said it would. And when we call them and say, John, it's Alex. How are you, man? I was thinking about you. How's your family? How did the summer go? What's going on with school, which is starting? Now, mm -hmm. after you catch up like a human, you turn the conversation to business. What are you working on these days that I might be able to help you with? So it's not just a, you know, how yeah. are you call? It's a catch up human phone call, and then we pivot to business. And these conversations take a few minutes. Yeah, I was going to say, because sometimes people will, you know, they'll do these initiatives and they'll say, okay, uh, you know, let's call all of our customers. And people will literally call up and say, Alex, how's everything going? You know, maybe they'll do the personal small talk and then they'll say, how's everything going with my product? And you'll go, Bim, it's fine. And then I'll I'm go, good. okay, yeah. okay, yeah, I'm good. And then I'll go, okay, well, uh, just wanted to say hi and end of conversation, right? Right. Yeah. And then, so we need to intentionally pivot to the business. And so what I found in my work with clients, and you know, I've done this process in the system, which is in the book mm -hmm. uh, with probably more than 10,000 salespeople. And, and so we know this works. And what you find is five minutes is enough, right? Five minutes right. per day of combined total proactive communication, which which can be those phone calls we talked about, but they could yeah. also be a follow-up on a quote or a proposal. They mm -hmm. can be a did you know question, which is, hey, did you know I can also help you with this or that? They can be a reverse did you know question, which is, hey, what else do you need, John, that I can help you with, where the customer names the product to us instead of us having to name it to them. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great technique where you could say, listen, what are you buying from my competition that I can help you with? You know, right. I'd like to help you with that. We're talking now. What do you need to remember to call them for? You got me now. Let me help you with that. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll tell you, you know, when we're present in this way, nobody will ever say to us, uh, no, I'd rather you not make my life easier today. Yeah. Nobody will ever say that to us. And people want to be helped, you know? Mm -hmm. And as we sit here now, it's an interesting time. People are more available than ever. You well, know, we're yeah, all sitting absolutely. at our desks, right? We're all sitting with our phone. And everybody's doing the same thing, John. Before we started recording, you said, Alex, where are you these days? And I said, I'm in mm -hmm. Chicago these days and every day, right? I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. leave right where I am. And nobody's leaving where they are, mostly. So they're more reachable than ever. And yet, they're sitting in relative silence. Nobody's calling mm -hmm. them. You know, mm -hmm. So if we reach them and if we go to them and say, hey, I'm Alex, I'm John, 
I'm interested. I care about you. Let me help you. Yeah. They're going to reward that because they don't have anybody doing that for them. No, no, I'm absolutely. And, and I, that's why I think it's, it's incredibly important that, they, that people think about the way that they communicate. Because, as I said, you can have the opportunity to talk to somebody, but you can blow it by really not being prepared, by not being, by not having something to offer, by not being enthusiastic enough or sounding genuine enough to sound like you're just doing it because you think it's a good thing to do. I mean, everybody can pick up on that, right? Yeah, totally. And, you know, I'm not suggesting that uh, your viewers and our, our viewers and our listeners mm -hmm. and readers and everybody, I'm not suggesting that salespeople need to care more. I think we care more mm -hmm. than enough. What I am suggesting is we need to communicate that care yeah. a little bit yeah. more, you know, <laughs> because if you care in silence, nobody knows, right? It's like a tree <laughs> falling in the forest. Nobody knows it <laughs> fell. Nobody knows you care if you don't <laughs> tell me that you care. And so that's all this is. It's a system in five minutes a day. And in the book, I have planners and trackers, John, right? So I've got a place to go and write down who to call for the week. And then I've got a place, a different form where you can track what happened. And these are important parts of the system because they, they help you think through being proactive and then they help you record proof of being proactive. Um, yeah, and and as you say in it, uh, you say you don't want people to read the book here. I want you to do those do this book. Yeah, I don't want you to read the book. I want you to do the book. And you know, here I just these just arrived like three days ago, mm -hmm. so you're one of the first people to see them. You know, the Excellent. moment when your book goes from being on the screen and in your head sure. to actually mm -hmm. like in your hands, it's a really mm -hmm. cool moment. So that happened here Friday. Um, but you know, the back of the book says this book is a sales growth system, mm -hmm. and. So the book is a system. I don't want you to read all the way through and not do anything. I want you to read a chapter or two and then go do something, right? Plan who to call, make the call. Plan which products you're going to tell uh, your customer about, uh, which you can help them with, and then do those things. Um, then I want you to write it down and track it because the tracking becomes, number one, a gold mine to follow up on. Number yeah. two, the tracking becomes proof of your own success because the wins come quickly. I have a chapter and I don't know if I can find it. There's a chapter that says the wins come quickly in this work. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, and who that's doesn't, who doesn't, who doesn't like that? Um, but when, Here's, yes, uh, I don't want you to do this book. I want you to read. Yeah. It. I love that. Uh, I, mean, so the you other also, I don't want you to read this book. I want you to do this book. Yeah. I also uh, saw that you mentioned there's a key mindset to fuel your sales growth. And I think that's where, a lot of things start is in the mindset because you can get a book like yours, you can get the plan, but if you don't have them, if you don't, if you don't get your mindset right, you're going to go into it almost with the self-fulfilling prophecy that it's not going to work. Yeah, absolutely. Because we can't outsell our mindset, right? I mean, our behavior follows our thinking. And if you feel that you're bothering the customer and that you're stepping on their toes and that you're annoying them, how are you going to sell? You're going to sell meekly, you know, mm -hmm. sort of trepidatiously, fearfully, uh, tiptoey. If conversely you believe you have tremendous value for your customers, right? Which you do, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I believe that about you and, and John mm -hmm. believes that about you. Yep. Uh, and your customers most importantly believe that about you. So now you've got to believe that about you and then behave accordingly. Those are the two keys. Know how good you are, everybody else does, and then behave as though you're good. Behave as though you have tremendous value to your customer. And if your mindset is that way, John, you're gonna sell completely differently. You're gonna sell confidently, positively, optimistically, and boldly, which is what mm. this growth requires. Yeah, and, and, to, and to that point is all of this communicates itself so if i'm not confident if i think i'm annoying you whatever that is how i will communicate and with the best will in the world there's nothing i can do to disguise that so you have to authentically believe these things you're absolutely right you know i do um projects with customer facing teams so my work in the world you know you don't write books to make money right you write mm, books sure. to um uh, you know help a lot of people and and credibility and all those things um, and I do these projects with teams and uh, almost always the owner or, or the, the top executive that I'm working with says to me, you know, we've tried a lot of these things before, but nothing has stuck, nothing sticks, yeah. right? You probably hear that a lot. And 
my answer almost always is that corporate change is really, really hard. And the reason it doesn't stick almost always is that most people don't cover the mindset, which is the key. Mm -hmm. We try to jam through the behaviors, right? We try to jam through, do this, make 50 calls a day, but we never address the fear, the discomfort, right? And all the issues that keep us from making those calls. And I think that's the key. We have to, I'd say in my work, uh, John, it's probably 70% mindset work and 30% behavior work because everybody knows what to do. You know, everybody knows the phone is better than email and yet, right, we email. So it's not a question of they don't know. Everybody knows. All of our listeners know everything we're talking about right now. It's just a matter of, of doing what we know. Knowing doesn't make us any money. Uh, yeah. The doing is what makes the money. Yeah, and, it's, and it is funny how uh, you will hear still a lot of people sort of go, oh, yeah, well, I, the phone doesn't really work. I never get people. I just get voicemails. Nobody voice wants mail. to talk to me. Nobody wants to talk to me. All of that. And it's almost, as you, to your point, it's, uh, if you don't fix that mindset, you're talking yourself out of it immediately and you're giving yourself a get out clause. And what happens, first few calls you'll make, yeah, you're going to get a voicemail. You go, yeah, there, see, told you so. And, and you, you uh, uh, experience the voicemail as a loss, you know? So I right. failed. I, oh, I got their voicemail. Here's another failure. Well, no, they get to hear your voice, right? They get mm -hmm. to hear your name. They get to hear that you care. They get to hear your energy. It's not a failure. It's a win. Yeah, and that's think of that. Yeah, and think of that, of all the voicemails you get every day, what are the ones that you remember? It is the ones that have energy, have enthusiasm, sound intriguing, and make you think, totally. well, well, that person sounds like they, uh, they've got something interesting to say, so maybe I will actually yeah. call them back. But I'm not going to call back the one who sounds like they would rather be doing anything else than even leaving yeah. a message. Totally. Yeah, because that's, that, that's you know, 90 to 95% are that way. So I think the point is it's really easy to stand out, you know, in this crowd, right? 90 to 95 are how you just described. 90 to 95% are reactive and timid and fearful. So it's really easy to do better than that and be one of the best. I say to my clients, if you can get good at the phone now, if you can figure out how to make calls and use them for sales success now, you're going to put so much distance between you and, and the competition that they will never be able to catch up. That's how much distance you will put. Yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, it's, so, it's so true. But here, there's another one I noticed here where you said it will never feel perfect, so just take action. Because there's another, there's another great get out of jail card, isn't it? The perfectionist one. It's a, well, the system isn't set up perfectly yet, or, or I haven't crafted the right message just yet. And so everything, and the great thing about perfection is it's unachievable, so you never have to take action. That's right. You'll never feel like it's perfect, right? You just said it. You'll never feel like it's perfect. And so just go, just take action. You know, I had a business mentor that told me uh, years ago, maybe 20 years, 15, 20 years ago, he said to me, uh, uh, when it's 80% ready, move. Yeah. That's yeah. when you go. Why? Because the last 20%, it's dysfunctional. Only you know it's missing, right? <laughs> yeah. Meaning, and let me give you the example, John. If I make a mistake here now, right, in our conversation, who knows that I made a mistake? Nobody. Pretty much only I know. You know, so like, like I misread the thing in the book and that one was obvious, but if I forget to say something, if I, um, you know, say something not exactly the way I want it to, only I know that. So I don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, and, and I think that's the point is exactly is that we spend too much time worrying about, and I, I agree with that 80-20 rule is number one, it's normally the 20% that actually doesn't have that much value uh, and, uh, and the part that the customer is never going to notice anyway or, or the other person is never going to notice and it's only you fixating on it. And again, you're only fixating on it because it's allowing you to be inactive. <laughs> Not all the way ready yet. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and by the oh. way, you know, pro procrastination due to fear mm -hmm. um, really is what we're talking about here. That's what perfection is in the sales world, right? So procrastination and perfection, you know, perfection really, we use it as a, as a crutch to yeah. procrastinate and keeps us off the phones, as you said. And so uh, perfection is the thing that makes one of the things, one of the big things that keeps us off the phones.
Yeah. And then, I mean, as I look through the, uh, some of the actions that you've outlined in your book, I mean, a lot of these things are very, you're not talking about big complex things here. You're talking about very simple, uh, executable tasks that you can do you know, one after the other and track them very easily and, and make them kind of repetitive in, in a good way. Uh, so, you're, so what you're proposing in your book, you're not asking people to really undertake anything massively outside their comfort zone. Uh, no, uh, and and I'm only asking for five minutes, mm -hmm. and and so the 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 system is the key here. The system is the key to any sort of predictable, uh, repeatable sales growth. And this the, the the great thing about five minute selling is this, it creates completely predictable growth because what happens is you communicate proactively uh, a lot more all the time, but mm -hmm. only in five minutes a day. That's enough, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I, I talk about the system being the key. Actions on their own, when you happen to think about it, once in a while, right? When I happen sure. to get there, they're fleeting. They're like a snowflake falling to the pavement and it melts, you know? It yeah, goes yeah. away. But in system, uh, what you get is so much repeat, uh, repetitive outbound communication that it becomes a blizzard. So, for example, we know that 20% of did you know questions close, right? We know that statistically, which means if I ask you about five different things, did you know that I could also help you with uh, your, your sales team's behavior? But did you also know that I can do uh, coaching with your sales managers? But did mm -hmm. you also know uh, that my team can go and get testimonials from your happy customers so that we work on the mindset of your sales team? Yeah. So if I do five of those, we know statistically one is going to turn into a piece of business over time, mm -hmm. right? 20% close. So if I do 50, 10 will turn into business. But if I do 5,000 of those in a year, 1,000 will turn into a piece of business. And it's, it's even more this way if you sell products. So right. let's say there's 10 salespeople, 10 people that face customers, and they ask five did you know questions a day. That's 50 a day, and each did you know takes three seconds. Right. So five did you knows means 15 seconds a day. That's how we get to five minutes because you can do a lot in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So 10 salespeople asking five did you knows 50 a day, 250 a month, uh, 250 a week, a thousand a month, 12,000 a year. We know that 20% close, right? 20% of 12,000 is 2,400 new line items. So mm -hmm. then you just figure out the average value, the average cost of your new line item. If you don't like 2,400, ask for 10 did you knows instead of five. <laughs> now we're asking for 30 seconds instead of 15. Do you see how much additional selling you can do in five minutes a day? Not yeah. five minutes when you happen to think about it, but five minutes by everybody, every day, over time. And again, instead of a snowflake that melts, you get a blizzard. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's all about being systematic in the approach. Yeah, because, I mean, it's like... Yeah, if you go to the gym randomly, well, you can't probably can't go to the gym right now. But if you work out randomly, you'll get random results, right? <laughs> if you right. if you work out consistently, you'll get consistent results, right. and it's the same thing. And same one other thing that you, too. yeah, exactly. And the, the one other thing that kind of jumped out at me here uh, as we finish up is uh, asking for referrals. I don't know why this this is just such a it's it, it's it just drives me nuts, this one, because uh, it's like people, whenever you say, have you asked for a referral? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. I asked. Did you get any? No, no, no. And it's like, it's like, it's like a one and done thing. Yeah, well, like, Alex, I'm going to say, oh, do, you have, do you know anybody else who could use my product or service? And you're like, no, not off the top of my head. Okay, well, I asked. <laughs> it's fascinating because so many times we salespeople uh, confuse thinking about something a lot with actually mm -hmm. doing it, you know? Right. So some of those, uh, you, many salespeople don't even get to the question that you just demonstrated, you know? And we, we think about it every day, but the fear keeps us from doing it because we're so uncomfortable asking because what if they don't like me? And what if, mm -hmm. you know, what if they leave me as a customer because they're gonna get <laughs> so upset at me by me asking for a referral to feed my family, you know, <laughs> that they're gonna leave me even though I've nurtured them for 20 years and when they leave me, when I ask them for a referral, then I'm going to die and my family will starve, right? I'm plenty <laughs> of my family down there. Um, so, yeah, and the question is, is, is just how you said it, John, who do you know, like yourself, who I can help the way that I help you? 
Exactly. And then I am going to be quiet, John, and I'm going to shut up, and I'm not going to say a word until you give me a referral. So much business and so many referrals are lost to nervous chatter because we're not quiet uh, after we ask a question. I, uh, I, I love that you brought that up, actually, just before we go, because that is another thing. I think uh, we, we, we live in this culture that fear is silence. It's like if we're having a dialogue and I'm a salesperson, I'm trying to sell to you, silence is my enemy. I have to fill that silence. If you said, and, and it's crazy, because if I ask you a question like that, and then you go quiet for a moment, clearly you're reflecting on it. I'm thinking. But instead, in thinking, but instead I go, ah, silence. So then I butt in, completely knock you off your train, train of thought, and the moment is lost. Uh, and, it, and it's getting worse, even it's getting worse because people uh, doing it virtually and on Zoom, they're actually even more paranoid about silence as that. And it's, it's based on, you know, this comes from what, what you said, which is fear, right? Mm -hmm. Fear is the reason. We're, we're so uncomfortable with the customer thinking about the referral. Look, you've been thinking about asking for the referral for two weeks. They haven't been thinking about your referral for two weeks. Let them think, you know? And then there, there's a different kind of silence. There's two kinds of silences I write about in this book. The first kind of silence is what we're talking about. Ask a question and then let the customer think. Yeah. Uh, John, sometimes I'll count to 100 in my head. I don't care, but I won't be the first one to talk after I ask a question like that. Uh, the other kind of silence is in the midst of the conversation where uh, you finish your sentence and I don't jump in right away mm -hmm. uh, until I give it like a two B, the 1001, 1002, then I go. And in those pauses, I'm giving you time to think about other things to share with me that I don't even know to ask you about. You're gonna bring right. stuff up that I couldn't possibly even ask about because I didn't know that was a thing until you <laughs> told me about it. So yep. that happens all the time in these conversations. So give people a beat or two after their answer kind of lingers off or, or trails off. And then uh, and about, I don't know, 20 or 30% of them, like up to a third of the time, they're going to think of something else and jump in with it. Exactly. Oh, and also, yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, this has been fantastic, Alex. Alex Goldfein. The book is Five Minutes Selling, the proven simple system that can double your sales even when you don't have time. And it launches next week, and you can see it there behind Alex, and he's got his brand new copy in his hand as well. Yellow, you can't miss it. Big yellow book. Uh, uh, all of Alex's information plus the link to the book will be in his contributor bio. But before we go, Alex, please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. So uh, I run a revenue growth consulting company, so I grow uh, the sales of the companies that I work with. Uh, I tend to work with uh, distributors and manufacturers of pretty boring stuff. Um, so things like uh, lumber <laughs> and steel and pipes and valves and HVAC, but it makes the world go around. I also have yeah. a number of service companies. I have engineering companies and law firms. Uh, and my typical client adds 10 to 20% uh, annually every year by doing the kinds of things we're talking about, by implementing, implementing the mindset systems and then the behavior systems but not the technology systems, right? The thinking and the behavior systems to um, uh, really just try to help more people some more. And that's, I don't even call it selling when I'm in front of these groups. You know, all we're doing is helping more people some more. So that's the work. All of that is on my website, uh, which is my last name, goldfane.com. And what, when you go there next week, because you know, we're not putting the book there now, because I don't want people to buy the book yet. It's not, for sale, it's not available yet. Um, it comes out next uh, Tuesday, the 25th, as you said. So there's going to be, a, a, this is the cover of the book. So you'll see, you'll see the book on the site. And then when you click on it, you'll be able to download the planners and the trackers that are in the book mm. uh, for free. So there's no cost. And even if you don't buy the book, you can download the planners and the trackers and use them. So those are going to be on my website, goldfane.com. Thank you. And um, that's fantastic. And that's very valuable uh, for people. I really encourage you to, to go and check it out. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. And thanks again, Alex, for today. Thank you, John. I appreciate you having me on. I'm grateful.